In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a collage of images or a grid of images using Adobe InDesign. This is just a finished uh, look to see what we're going to end up with relatively, depending on if I end up using the same images. But we're going to create this type of look with um, using the rectangle tool and the gap tool in InDesign. So first we're going to create a new document. I'm going to go to File to New Document. And we're going to start with 8.5 by 11 horizontal. You can create any size you want, but I find that 8.5 by 11 works best, especially when you're um, posting this on to social media. So in the width, we're going to create 11 inches, and in the height, 8.5. Make sure your orientation is set to horizontal. We um, don't need any margins because we want to go to the edge of the page. And we won't need our bleed tool, so keep that at zero. And then click Create. What's going to open is a blank document. I'm going to hit Command minus to zoom out. And we're going to start by clicking on the rectangle tool, or rectangle frame tool specifically. Now with your mouse, I want you to start at the left or right hand corner, depending on which side you want to use. And we're going to click and drag across. And you're going to see a blue rectangle frame open up. Keep holding down on your mouse. Do not release this yet. Now using the right arrows on your keyboard, I want you to click a couple times. And we're going to create three columns. Actually, I'm going to make four columns. And click the down arrow. And we're going to make, sorry, the up arrow. And we're going to make three rows. So you're going to have a set of 12, image, or 12 uh, frames on here. Once you have that, just hit release on your mouse. And now you will see a grid of 12 squarish looking <laughs> frames. Now using the gap tool, and it's the um, let's see, the second to the the second tool down on the right hand side it looks like two uh, lines with a right left and right arrow on the center. Move your mouse over to the center of your frames where the gap is in the center. I'm going to click your mouse and click and drag across left and right. You'll see how these move. Okay, you can move this across like this and create a bunch of narrow frames and then a bunch of more horizontal frames. You can also do this on the on the other side and just basically just stretches everything out. You can do this left or right or up or down. I'm going to hit Command minus to go back to our original grid. Um, you can also use the option tool to just click and drag and move these across. I won't need that feature, so I'm going to hit Command Z to go back. Holding down your Command key, you can actually click and drag across to make the gap smaller or all the way to the edge so they're, but they're next to each other, but there's no gap between them. You can do the same thing with the ones atop, so now you have no gap between these. And hit Command minus or Command Z to go back to our original grid, and then holding down the Control key. I'm sorry, take that back. It's a Shift key. Holding down the Shift key, you can select just two grids that you want to move independently. So you're not moving all three in a row, or the three on the row, or the three in the column, and you can move these separately. Holding down the Shift key, you can change the gaps between certain images. Now this helps if you're Want you to just give a little bit more options to the way your grid is laid out, so it's not a, a, all a bunch of squares. So you have some a mix of horizontal and vertical images, and then you can once you've done that and they are separated from the grid. See how all these are in a row? When you select this one, you can actually there you go. Now we can click and select more, but that's going to create a gap in here. So that's cool if you want to create that kind of look for it, where you can go over them. And that'll be kind of neat if you want to add a little bit more, a little bit more of a um, another option for you as a design as a design layout. But what I want to do is go back Command Z a couple of times so we can go back to our original frames, our original grid, and I'm going to take out a few in the center. Actually, I'm going to delete these. I want to create a few more rows here. So using my rectangle frame tool. I'm going to click and drag across again. I'm holding down my mouse. I'm not going to release it. And my left arrow, I'm going to create 
three columns three and four rows. And I'm going to release it. Now I want to just select these three in the middle. Oops. I just want to select those two right here and this one and delete it. Then using my move tool, I'm going to click and drag this across. Now I have my snap to guides set. So now my gap will be even when I extend the size of this graphic frame out. All right, and now I'm going to use my gap tool and I'm going to just arrange them a little bit differently. Go back to this. I have two, a horizontal and a, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the one above and I'm going to click on this frame and bring it all the way to the top. I'm going to delete the bottom one and bring this one all the way down to the bottom. And I'm just grabbing the anchor in the center. If I grab the ankle anchor here, let me hit command minus, you can grab the anchor at the corner and bring it down as well. I just like to grab the center one since I'm bringing it down to the edge of the page. And looking back at my original, I have two smalls up here, one in the center, and then I have these three here and these three here. So I'm just going to try and recreate this as best I can. So I'm going to delete this one and bring this one to the top. And then I have a small one here. So now I'm going to use my gap tool and holding down my, oops, sorry, my shift key. I'm just going to move these two independently of the grid. So now I have a horizontal and a vertical in there. And then using my gap tool, I'm going to close the gap between these and make them a little bit more of an even two horizontal images. And I have a I'm almost there. Yep, looks like we're almost good. And about with the gap tool here, I want to make more of a square at the bottom. And I'm going to bring these a little closer together. Okay, so now we have basically the same grid that I had before. And now using the um, a folder that I have open on my finder window, I have a folder of images of this one model that I'm gonna use for this, for this particular collage. So I'm gonna start clicking and dragging images into the frame. And it's gonna come in a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna select that image using my move tool. It's that black arrow tool right here at the top um, left hand corner of our tools panel and I'm going to go to option fitting to fill frame proportionally and it's going to resize our images to image to fit into that graphic frame. Then I'm going to select my direct frame um, tool, or sorry, direct selection tool. It's the white area. I'm going to click inside the center of that graphic frame and I'm going to move using my shift key and my right arrow tool on my keyboard. I'm just going to move this over a little bit to close the gap or close the space in a little bit. It's basically I'm giving it a different crop without actually cropping it. Now we're going to go back into the finder window with our images. I'm going to start dragging images over that I want in my grid. And I'm trying to select images that help point um, wherever she's looking, they're going to go in, t in, the, in inwards towards um, the other images. So starting from left to right, because people read in a Z formation, I want the, the viewer's eye to go kind of around in a circle around the center image. So using the move tool, I'm going to click this image, select it, object, fitting, fill frame proportionally. Same thing with this image using my move tool, select that box, object, fitting, fill frame proportionally. And I'm going to go back and start filling in with some more photos. I'm going to click this in here. I like that image, I'm going to put this here. And this image will go here. Um, let's see, which other ones did I use? Ah, okay, 
So white blouse. We're just gonna scroll through and find that image. Or a different one, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna put that one in there for now. And what other images do we use here? Oh yeah, some more of the purse. And, okay, and white blouse shot again. It's a little tedious. You're kind of going through and trying to, trying to find images that work best for this. Okay, I might have put it into the wrong folder here. Okay, yep, I did. So we're just gonna click and drag that image here. And back into the models folder. And I'm gonna find one more photo to put in there. Okay, once I have all my images in my frames, now I want to make sure that they're all fitting into the frames proportionally. So I'm going to select all. It's Command A on your keyboard shortcut, or you can go to Edit to deselect this. Edit to select all. Then we're going to go to Object Fitting Fill Frame Proportionally. Now you may have to do a little bit of adjusting to make some of these images fit properly. Um, you may want to make some of the frames a little bigger, so I'm using my Gap tool to arrange those boxes a little bit more, and then I'm gonna select the two images I wanna refit, go to object to fit fulfilling, fit, <laughs> fit frame proportionally. And I'm gonna reduce the size of this image to fit back into here. I think I kind of moved it off the grid there, and click fit frame proportionally. Then you can, if you wanna change the crop of any of the images in here, but you don't wanna change the position, using your direct selection tool, select that photo, so it's basically using like um, like in Photoshop when I show you how to use the um, uh, layer masks, what it's doing is hiding anything on the outside of that's not visible inside this graphic frame. It's the same concept. Holding down the shift key to constrain my proportions, I'm gonna grab that corner anchor and increase the size of this photo so that I have a different crop. Okay, once that's set, I'm gonna release it. And I'm moving, oops. I just want to select this image, so I'm using my direct selection tool still, and I'm moving this image over. Same thing with this one, I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger, and the same with this image. And the same with this image. Want some more space in there. I really don't want that photograph in there. So let's go back and see if we can find that one image in the white blouse with the larger. There it is. All right. So then I'm gonna move this image over I'm using my direct selection tool again. And I'm just gonna move this image to sit, fit in that frame this way. Now, once we have our grid complete, you may notice that maybe this uh, gap in between these images is a little bit too wide and you wanna bring them in a little bit. Using your move tool, I want you to select all images, or actually do your keyboard shortcut, Command A, then on the move tool, uh, move your mouse over to the corner of your um, all of your frames. And holding down your space bar, Actually, you need to click on Command A. This is a little bit tricky. Say so Command A, and then make sure you grab all those images. Okay, and now with your space bar, you can bring in those images. It creates a smaller space between those gaps, but it's not very precise. So usually you try to do this before you put in the images, and, and you can kind of play with a little bit more, but that's one way to do it. I'm going to Command Z on my keyboard. 
I don't really like the way that one works so well. So what I like to do, just to be a little bit more a little more precise, is I select each image, and I'm using my arrow tool. I'm going to count in two to th two to five um, uh, clicks in and bring it towards the cent your center image right here. So I'm going to hit my arrow three times. One two three. One, two, three, and I'm gonna bring this one down. One, two, three. And both of these are gonna come down. So you can click and drag across two images at once to so select them both. One, two, three, and bring it down. This one is gonna to have to come in one, two, three, closer to that. These three come in closer to this image, and these three at the bottom come in up. Okay, and then just gonna bring them all in three clicks. It's a little too much. And they all look about right. So I'm going to click, click um, Command A to select all of my images, and I'm going to move them as a group to the top left hand corner. And again, um, I want you'll notice that some of these are just a little bit off at the bottom because we get to bring them in. It kind of um, keeps them, gets them a little bit off centered. So all you have to do is click one image and bring it up and your um, snap tool will snap it to the nearest image and now they're evenly um, aligned. And this one is not aligned, these two are not aligned to the bottom image. So I'm going to click and drag across to select them both and then drag them in until they're aligned with that bottom image. And the same thing here, it doesn't look like we're quite aligned so I'm going to click and drag them down. And now we're fully aligned. So I'm going to hit Command and my keyboard again to select the entire grid. And holding down my Shift key, I'm going to click and drag them out until they're um, all the way to the, all the way to the edge of the page. And now we're going to have to reset our images. Um, so the ones that are kind of uh, not filling in those graphic frames, I'm going to select each object or sorry, each graphic frame, and we're going to refit them. So object fitting and fill frame proportionally. Object fitting, fill frame proportionally. So I'm going to do that until all the ones are filled in again. Same thing with this. And that one I did not bring in. I'm going to turn off my guys for a minute. So I'm clicking the W on my keyboard and I can see that some of these are not fitted right. So object fitting fill frame proportionally. I didn't re refit them. And this one needs to come closer to to be aligned with that image. So it's a little bit of a process but still a lot easier than doing this in Photoshop. And this one needs to come in a little bit more too. All right, so now it looks like all our gaps are pretty much even. So now I've closed the gap between them so not quite as wide. Or the other option is to do this again and bring them in all the way to the edge. So if you don't want a gap at all, all you have to do is bring your images closer together. So I'm using the move tool and I'm just aligning them closer together until the green line the green lines are right on top of each other. So I'm just going to bring them in. And let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm holding down my command and spacebar to zoom in. And all I'm doing is picking up that graphic frame and moving it to the edge or bringing it closer to the center image. So that's basically the heart of this, this grid here. I'm just going to bring these down. And you can see that this one is overlapping underneath this top image. So I'm just going to click on that um, anchor and bring it in. Just going to align them as close as possible. I'm holding down my space bar so I can click. You see the little hand pops up. So I'm just going to click and move over until we get into there. And I'm going to bring this one centered. And I'm going to widen this one just a little bit. Object fitting fill frame proportionally. I'm going to zoom out. So now all of our images are really close together. There's no gap between them. I'm selecting these two on the outer side and I'm going to align them with that bottom image. So 
So they should all be pretty well aligned with each other. This one's not. Oops, accidentally added a guide I don't need. And just make sure it's all aligned. Good. Command zero to bring our image back to center and command A to select the entire grid. I'm gonna click and drag it to that corner. And this one also needs to come in. Again, command A. Now I'm gonna click and drag it. Object fitting, filtering proportionally. Click and drag those outer, select those three outer ones and we're just gonna drag it those graphic frames out to the edge of the page. Object fitting, fill for frame proportionally. And then I'm hitting the W on my keyboard so it hides the, uh, the selections on uh, the, the selected graphic frames. I don't want to see them. Object fitting, fill frame proportionally. Okay, these ones are not quite aligned so I'm going to zoom in, command spacebar. And I'm just going to extend this graphic frame to the edge of this one. Object fitting fill frame proportionally and I'm zooming out, command zero. And again, you can just realign your images so that they're cropped the way you want them. So again, I'm gonna enlarge the center photo and bring and kind of close in that space, a little bit of white space I have there. And I make this image a little bit bigger. Oops, that's too big, command Z. Zoom out a little bit to have some more room. And I'm using the direct selection tool, my shift key to make them in, uh, to enlarge them and my right arrow to, and down arrow to center within that graphic frame. Again, I'm clicking, using the direct selection tool, clicking the center of that image and using my space bar, or sorry, my shift key and my right arrow to move that image over. And I'm gonna enlarge this one a little bit. So basically I'm just repositioning all the images within these graphic frames. This one is a little bit too uh, wide, so I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. And that way I can make these two a slight bit bigger. So you just wanna zoom in and see if you have all of your, all the gaps are closed up. This one might not be quite closed. All right, so this might be just a trick of the eye here. Yep, that's it. Zooming in and zooming out until I can find whether or not that is working in its position properly and it's close to the other images because I don't want a gap at all between my pictures in my grid. All right. Now, once you have your grids complete, all you have to do is save this. So go to File to Save. And I'm gonna save this one to my desktop. I'm just gonna call it collage one or whatever it is you wanna call it. And I'm gonna save this as an InDesign document. We're using InDesign CC 2019 and I'm gonna click save. Now, if you're gonna post this to um, your social media, you're gonna to wanna to export as a JPEG. So go to file to export. and choose your file format. We're gonna scroll down to JPEG and take the space out of here, underscore, and click save. And it will automatically add your file format to the end of that file name. Um, we only need to do range one or you can click all because we only have one document in our InDesign file at the moment. Pages, this is only a single page, it's not a spread. And whatever resolution you want, I don't go lower than 96 DPI um, because then when you open it up on a computer, it'll look nice and crisp. We're gonna keep our color spaces RGB. We do not have document bleed, so we'll turn that off and click export. Give it a couple of minutes and we can look at our, let's see, open up a finder window and go to my desktop and you'll see our collage sitting right there as a JPEG. 
If you want to add your logo or maybe um, as a watermark or have a little line with uh, of text with your website address, click on the type tool and we're going to click and drag across to create a text box. And here's where you can put in your um, website address. You can put in redcraneportraits.com. I'm going to hit select all. So I select the text within that type tool. I'm sorry, within that um, type frame. And you can use the character palette that's up above in, in the InDesign um, window. Or you can click on character panel. And I'm going to choose my font that I used for my, um, or one of the fonts that I used for my brand. We're going to go on Open Sans. And I'm going to select Open Sans Light. And I'm going to bump this up to 18 points and then give it a little bit of a space between um, the letters. So I'm going to bump it up to 200. And I think maybe we'll go back down to 14 points for this. And depending on where you have that text um, on your image, it may or not may or may not appear um, depending on if you're using um, black te um, color text or white color text. So just pay attention to that as to where you're placing it. I think white text would show much better on here. So I'm going to click on my swatch panel. If you don't have your swatch panel open, you can find that under Window, Color, to Swatches. And I'm going to select paper white and I'm going to hit command shift C on my keyboard to center that text and command option C to reduce the um, space of that text box. I just like things to be a little bit more tight. I'm going to move that image, that text over my image where I can see it. And I'm just clicking the W arrow on my keyboard so I can hide those. Um, selected uh, frames. Actually, they're not selected. They're just showing the um, where my graphic frames are and the blue outline around them. When I click W, it hides those. And I want to add in my logo, so I'm going to go into my Finder window, and I'm going to go to. I'm sorry, take that back. I'm going to hit a new Finder window, and I'm going to go to my desktop, and I'm going to select the folder that has my logo in it. So wherever it is you're saving that in your Dropbox or in your desktop. All right, you have a, I have PNG and EPS options. What I'm gonna do is create another graphic frame over one of these images. So I'm going back in InDesign, clicking on the rectangle frame tool, and I'm gonna create a graphic frame and then I'm going to go back into my Finder window and I'm going to select one of my logos. I like to use the EPS one. I'm going to click and drag that into the graphic frame that we just created. Now clicking on the Move tool, I'm selecting that graphic frame, Object, Fitting, Fill Frame Proportionally. It's going to look a little pixelated right now. Object, Fitting, Fill Content Proportionally. There you go. Um, it's going to look a little pixelated right now because I don't have I have the um, Overprint Preview selected. So what I'm going to do is go to View and click on Overprint Preview and it's going to give you a preview of what that, Im that grid is going to look like with your images um, in full resolution. Now this image isn't really, my logo doesn't really show up very well on that particular photo. So just move it around until you like where it's placed. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I just want to be able to see it on um, over my images and then I'm going to move this website address I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so I'm going back into my character panel and I'm going to reduce it to 12 points and if you want to put this on multiple images you can using the move tool click and select your um, text box holding down your option key you can click and drag it and you're making a copy of that text box very easily and move it to another image. I wanna make sure it's centered in this image so I'm just going to grab my, um, the type or the text frame 
and um, buff it up to the edge of this and align it to the edge of this image. And I'm dragging out the text frame to the other end of that um, photo to uh, make sure I'm aligning it in the center of the picture. And you can also make your logo just a little bit bigger if it came in a little small. You want to make it the size of it just a little bit bigger. Click on that graphic frame. And we're going to go to the scale tool. Let's share. Where is our scale tool? Maybe I don't have one in photo or in design. It's been a while since I've actually used the tool itself. I'm usually I use these um, the scale tool within the um, tools panel at the top of InDesign. Right now it's set to 100 on 100. What I'm going to do is increase that to 125, and I'm going to click the tab tool, and it's going to change the um, horizontal and vertical. Um, scale of my graphic frame automatically and I click on my move tool to readjust the position of my logo. I don't want to cover over anybody's face it just looks a little weird so I'm just using my arrows so that the text doesn't go over anyone's face and once you're done you can um, make this a more of a ghost image that looks more like a watermark than a solid image. You can go to the effects panel and change the opacity of that graphic frame. I'm going to drop it down to 50% and click return. So it's kind of ghosting that graphic frame. And I'm going to do the same thing with the type tool or the type boxes. And I'm going to lower the opacity of those as well. So just another option. It's kind of like adding your watermark in Photoshop. It's just another way of doing that. I'm going to bring that image back to 100%. Opacity. Okay, and once you're done, just save a new JPEG file, export, and keeping it as a JPEG, we're going to keep the same file name, and click Save. And now it's going to ask me to replace that original JPEG. Yes, I do want to replace it. Keeping it at 96 resolution, I'm going to click on Export. And I'm going to go into my Finder, go to the desktop, and I'm going to double click that collage so I can see it in my preview. So I can see exactly how clear it is. And then, oh, came in really big. Here we go. And there you go. That's how you make a um, collage of images using Adobe InDesign. If you have any questions, feel free to add them below in YouTube in the comment section, or you can reach us on our Facebook page at Designfully Templates.